Hello everyone and welcome to part 27, the final episode in the Complete Platformer series. First of all, just a huge shout out to everyone who's made it this far. So, at the time of making this video, 370,000 views on the first episode of this series. Um, on the latest episode, I mean 26 just came out, so it's not really a good measure, but 25, for example, has about 3,700, and that 3,700 has roughly been falling along for the last few episodes. So that's like one in a hundred of you determined to stick it out all the way to the end. Uh, you see that in pretty much every large tutorial series or thing like that on YouTube. Uh, part one of a tutorial series always gets like loads of enthusiastic people all, all ready to, to jump in. And then there's always a huge drop off to episode two, and then episode two onwards is a steady decline. So there's always just a small, uh, relatively anyway, small group of people by the end who've really stuck it out. And that's about 3,000 or almost 4,000 of you. So if you're one of them, really good job. I'm really proud of you for managing to stick through uh, this entire series. Um, I hope you've gotten a lot out of it. So this last episode we're going to do three small things, uh, each individually small, but each I think making a big difference to um, the overall feel and polished level of our game. The first thing we're going to do is make our hit sparks a bit better, that's what I kind of alluded to in the last part. The second thing we're going to do is make our signposts behave a bit better, so we press up on the keyboard rather than right clicking on them. Um, in order to activate them, and also showing a little arrow. I know that's something I said you could work out for yourself, but I'm going to show you how to do it in this episode anyway, so uh, surprise! And <laughs> the last thing we're going to do is add a strafing uh, animation to our game and also make it so the player's facing is dependent on the mouse cursor and which side of the cursor that it's on, uh, very similar to how our gun works, rather than just the direction of movement. You'll see how that works and how it just feels a lot better uh, by the end of this, okay? Three small things, each one of them doing something pretty important for the game. Um, I hope you enjoy it. Let's get in there. Okay, so we have our hit spark animation. You might remember this guy, and you might even remember me alluding to having improved it in the previous episode. You can see um, this animation makes quite a lot of sense if we were only ever hitting like uh, perfectly horizontal or perfectly vertical. Uh, surfaces, but unfortunately we can shoot at loads of different angles, so we need something that can, can work a bit better with different angles. This one doesn't look quite right when it hits at a diagonal. So what I've come up with is this animation instead. And you can kind of see how it works. It's it, it's simple enough for, I think, you guys to be able to kind of replicate this um, in, uh, in the sprite editor yourself, but I will include this in the assets as always because I know we haven't really spent a lot of time like learning how to draw or do animation because that's not the focus of this series. So I will include all this in the assets folder as usual. See, the, the idea with this one is what we're going to do is we're still going to move the bullet out towards where it meets contact with the wall, but now we've got this round explosion. What we'll do is then put that round explosion behind uh, the tiles at the point of collision so that we just get the sort of radiating outwards effect um, that looks like it's coming from the direction where the bullet hits, because you'll never see the entire of the circle. You'll just see sort of the radiating outwards bits, and uh, that works quite well. But there's a few, uh, couple of extra lines of code we need to add into um, the hit spark to make this work properly. But before we do that, um, I set the speed to 15 here just to be showing you what it looks like, but remember that when you set the speed um, in the sprite, that's actually changing the speed of playback uh, that it'll take when you assign the sprite to an object, uh, unlike Gaming Studio 1.x where this is just for previewing things. So I'm going to set this back to 30 first of all, and you can see wing, 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 that's a lot faster. Um, and I'm going to delete our original S hit spark, okay? So I'm going to delete that and rename you S hit spark. Then scroll down to O hit spark, our object for our hit sparks. Uh, you can see it's no longer got a sprite assigned because we just deleted the sprite that it was assigned to. So I select it, reassign it to S hit spark, and that should be all there is to it in terms of you know, changing the sprite. So now we need to go to our bullet object. So find O bullet, double click, and let's come to the step event and just find this error at the bottom here where we found our exact point of collision between ourselves and the wall, okay? So we know exactly already where we want our hit spark to be. And because we've set that origin exactly in the center, um, it, it should pretty cleanly position where we want that to be. Okay, and then we change it to a hit spark and that's all good. Uh, but what we wanna do is at the moment we create the bullet on, well, I think we have a bullet layer, don't we? Or a gun layer or something. But we wanna create this in a very specific position. So if we go to level one, uh, we wanna create these bullets 
underneath tiles and above trees but as you can see we've not actually got a layer there now we could in theory just create another layer but you can end up with way too many layers very easily in a project and also um we i mean we've only got three rooms but if you had more you would have to go through every room in your game therefore and add add in this layer okay to that uh, what you could do is maybe create that layer dynamically um or something um or like use room inheritance or something like that in order to control the, uh, the flow of layers a little bit better without having to create a million in your room at all. but we're going to take a simple kind of quick fix approach since the last couple of episodes on this you know we're just going to get our final things in and working um and it's a very useful one for you to know and just help you understand a bit more about how layers work so as you can see our trees layer you can see down here locked at the bottom of every layer um you've got a depth value and in this case our tree trees layer has depth 600 if we go up to tiles it has depth 500 and if we go up to walls 400 and you can see every layer has a depth a uh, separation of about 100 counting from zero at the very top, okay? Um, so that's helpful because if we set something to have a depth as you would in Game Maker 1.x to, to set things to be ordered below and above one another, uh, what it does is generally creates a um, temporary layer. So that can be really helpful if we don't have a specific layer and we know the exact depth. So let's come back now to our bullet step event in here. So what I'm going to do is first of all add uh, this instance to the tiles layer. So I'm going to type layer underscore add instance. Open bracket. The name of the layer in quotation mark is tiles. And uh, the instance we want to add is this instance. So ID. Okay, which will return the instance ID of this object. Then what I'm going to do is simply type depth plus equal one. And that'll um, essentially end up placing that layer first. Uh, Sorry, for placing this instance first of all on the tiles layer and then placing it on a temporary layer one depth below tiles, okay? And that'll obviously be 99 depths above uh, S tree, so it'll get us that has bark in exactly the right place. So we can just quickly test that now just to show you. So here we are, I've got the gun, and as you can see, it's looking a lot better. I think that looks a lot better than our previous hit spark. Like it covers our diagonal angles a lot better. And sits nicely just underneath the tile layer, but above the trees in the background. So the next thing we're going to do is improve our signposts in kind of a small but important way in terms of the sort of quality of life of our game. So at the moment they activate whenever you click the right mouse button on them when you're close enough, which I don't know really what I was thinking at the time. I guess that showed you how the mouse events work, but that's not really a great way of activating signs. So what we're going to do is we're going to change this so that you press up when your character is near the sign. And also when you are near the sign, we're going to get the sign to actually show a little up arrow. I remember saying something like that's something you can look into and work out yourself to improve it, but now you don't have to because uh, I'm going to show you how to do it here. Or if you've already done it, I guess you can skip ahead to the next thing. You've already done it um, and good for, you, good for you for doing so. But we're going to cover how you do it right now. So I'm going to add the create event first of all and I'm going to add nearby equal false and this is just going to be the variable that tells us whether or not we are near the sign okay and then close that and I'm going to right click on this global right pressed uh, event and change it I'm going to change the event to the step event okay um, so now you might be thinking well that's crazy because now it's just going to be trying to show the string every frame but what we're going to do is because inside here we've already checked to see if the player exists if the player is near the signposts and there is no text currently on the screen that's the perfect setup for us to then inside write if uh, keyboard check press oop, written this all wrong check press uh, ord open bracket uh, quotation mark w close quotation mark close bracket close bracket close bracket Okay, and then open brace and close a brace around this entire chunk here because this chunk is what actually then creates the text, okay? So if we're near it and then we've pressed uh, the keyboard in here. And so if we are near it in the first place, what we can do just before this check is set nearby to equal true. 
and then we can else this with nearby equal false. So we check to see if we're near it or not, and also um, conveniently to check to see whether or not the text is showing on the screen and whether or not we're nearby. So conveniently now we check to see if a player exists, if they're nearby, and whether or not text is already showing, and we have a variable that we can set to true or false. And that means we can then use that variable to decide whether or not to show a little up, uh, up arrow next to the sign to show you that you can press up to read the sign and that it is interactive in some way, okay? Uh, and that's also changed our input, obviously, to pressing the up key rather than um, just pressing uh, the, the right mouse button on it, okay? So now let's close the step event, that's everything we need to do that, and we're gonna add the draw event to this now. First of all, up here, I'm just gonna do draw self, uh, which means we the signpost draws itself, and we don't skip over the default draw uh, setup. And then all I'm gonna do is type draw, oh no, sorry, I'm gonna type if nearby, first of all, draw sprite, ext. So I don't think we've used draw sprite ext before, but um, this essentially stands for draw sprite extended, right? Now, there's quite a few functions in GameMaker that have an underscore ext variation of them. Um, this means instead of just drawing a specific frame of a spe uh, specific sprite at a specific location, we're going to draw a specific frame of a specific sprite at a specific location with uh, a specific X scale, specific Y scale, specific rotation, color, and alpha. Because what we're going to do is I'm going to take this S marker that we created for our uh, text boxes. I'm just going to draw it upside down because that's a really easy solution <laughs> to this. I don't have to make any more sprites. Sick. Uh, so <laughs> the name of the sprite I'm going to be drawing is S marker. Uh, the frame I'm going to be drawing is frame zero. Uh, the X is going to be the X position of the signpost. The Y is going to be Y minus 32, roughly, I think, will give us a good position. Uh, the X scale will be 1, and the Y scale will be minus 1. That's the important part. So that's going to flip the flip that from being facing downwards to facing upwards, okay? Because we're inverting its uh, vertical scale. Rotation is going to be zero. We don't want to rotate it. I suppose what we could have done, I suppose, is left that a one and rotated it by 180 degrees. That would also work just the same. Um, I just, I don't, I've chosen to do it minus one because that's how I'm familiar with flipping things usually. Um, color, you want to, uh, this, so this allows you to pick a color to blend with the sprite. So you could blend it with red and or blue or and, and so on just to uh, blend certain elements certain colors with uh, that color in order to sort of give it a tint. Because it's black, uh, tinting it with anything won't really matter because it's, it's just going to be black. Um, but the default tint you should always set if you just want something to show up as the colors it is, is C white, okay? And so by blending it with white, um, everything just continues to look the same, okay? Uh, alpha is going to be 1, that's the transparency, obviously we want it fully opaque, so I'm just going to put 1 in there, and that's all there is to it. So I can test that now too. So here is our signpost, you notice right clicking on it now doesn't do anything, or even when we're, we're right next to it. But when we are right next to it, we see this little up arrow come up now, which is, as I say, just S marker flipped upside down, so we know that we're close enough. Then all I have to do is press W, and it'll show the sign. It doesn't show it from a distance, it does show it when we're close enough. Okay, so that's just made that a little bit better, and honestly, Feel like that's probably how I should have done the signpost tutorial in the first place. Don't know why I didn't, but now we have. So that's that. Okay, so the very last thing we're going to do is something I alluded to in the previous part, and that's because we're going to add a strafing animation. Okay, so the moment we've got our running animation, and that's all chill. And what we're going to do is add this animation that I've created where he's running backwards. So at the moment, we base our direction, we flip our X scale left and right based on. Um, which direction we moved in, right? So when we move right, uh, we have image x scale 1, and when we move left, we have x scale minus 1, we flip and go the other way. Now, that worked fine up to a point. Um, when we added the gun kick back in, um, we noticed that when we shoot and we move left a little, we suddenly face left, and, and that's not great. Um, and we also kind of aim our gun behind us without really looking what we're doing whenever we're shooting backwards, okay? So what I'm going to do is make it so instead of tying direction to our um, direction of movement, uh, tying our facing to our direction of movement rather, we're going to tie our facing to the, whichever direction we are looking based on the mouse, alright? 
So let's come into our player object and into the step event that we love so much. Okay, I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom here where our animation section is. Okay, so you can see just right down at the bottom here, we've got if HSP does not equal zero, image X scale equal assign HSP. Okay, so that's what tells us to face the right way. I'm gonna completely get rid of this line, all right? And then right at the top here, at the top of the animation section, uh, I suppose I could have done it at the bottom one, but I, no, oh, no, I couldn't because I'm going to need this variable later. So I'm going to do it just at the top here, just so a hash region animation. I'm going to type var aim side equals sign mouse x minus x. Now, this is a nifty trick that someone explained to me is something I could have done with the gun. So you might remember in the gun, we determined whether or not to flip it um, based on whether or not our angle was over 90 and below 270, right? So whether it's facing left or facing right. An easier way to tell if it's just facing left or right is to simply subtract the mouse position from the X position of a thing and then return the sign of that. Because if it's one, we know we're on the right hand side. I don't know if it's minus one, uh, we know it's the left hand side, right? And, that, and that's really simple. We don't have to use um, hard coded degree numbers in there to work it out, okay? So that's really helpful. So that's now going to be plus one if we if the mouse is on the right of the player and minus one if it's on the left side of the player, which is going to be super, super useful. So the next line under this I'm going to write is if aim side does not equal zero, so if it's not like dead on, uh, if it is dead on, we don't want to change anything. Uh, image x scale equals aim side. Okay, and that'll flip us accordingly. Then I'm going to scroll down here and you can see uh, at the moment we've got this sprite index equals s player r. Well, just underneath that, since we know our HSP is not zero in this case, we can say if uh, aim side does not equal sign HSP. So that means if, you know, if our horizontal speed is currently positive, we're going to write an aim side is not positive, it's negative, uh, or if we're running to the left, uh, so that's negative and therefore that's positive, we want to use the other sprite, okay? So, not semicolon there, sprite index equal s player rb, okay? And rb for run backwards, that's just what I happen to name this sprite, which as you can see is literally just the mirror of this sprite. So I just flipped it so it's facing left and then I re-flipped the heads, okay? Uh, so it was pretty quick and easy to make, but I will include it in the assets folder so you don't have to go through the, the drudgery of doing that yourself. That's really all there is to it, okay? So I'm gonna save that and run that now. Okay, so as you can see, we're running to the left and if I place the cursor behind us, uh, we're still running the correct way, the animation's still running the correct way, but our head just flips around, okay? which is pretty cool. And um, same happen if we jump as well, the, the falling animation I guess still looks a little one-sided. I suppose we could look into making that more universal if you really wanted to. Um, but we're, we face the correct direction now, just based on where the mouse is pointing, which I think is, it generally feels a lot better, just generally, let alone the, um, the fix for the gun. So when we pick up the gun, when we shoot in one direction now, you see our facing remains correct. And whenever we aim, we're looking, we're actually looking where we're shooting. So that's pretty positive as well. You might consider doing a similar thing and making a similar change to the enemies. That one I really will leave to you. Um, but I think this looks and feels just a lot better for the player in general, okay? So there you go, three simple changes, and uh, I think it's made quite a bit of a difference. Uh, it's our sign as well. So with those changes, and they are very small, so maybe it seems a little anticlimactic for this to be the final episode, uh, but it is, nonetheless, the final episode. I think those changes make quite a bit of difference. I think just adding uh, adding that strafe feels a lot better. I think those hit sparks feel a lot better. I think the signpost uh, input change makes a lot more sense and gives you a lot more feedback for when you're selecting those signs. I think those are three very important things. And they're all very small things, so I'm glad I managed to fit them all into one lovely big episode full of lovely stuff for us to add to the game to finish this off. So once again, a shout out to everyone who's made it this far, everyone who's started from episode one and has plowed on through all of my rambling and all of my taking forever to get to the point, all the way to episode number 27 and having finished uh, your first platform game. Congratulations! 
Um, I know some of you out there will be thinking, well, you know, you said this was a complete platform game, but you didn't show me how to do uh, double jumps or such and such a mechanic. But you always have to bear in mind, I can only show you uh, a limited number of things. <laughs> any, any particular game is only going to have so many things, and we've tried to make something here that feels complete and feels polished. We've got ending screens, menu screens, everything feels nice, the gun bullet effects are, are, are really pretty, and we've got some nice screen shake going on. I think I've taught you a lot of cool stuff in this series, and I think if you take, if you've really paid attention and you've learned from this stuff, you can now go off, and you should know enough to really start doing whatever the hell you want. You should be able to start making your own changes to this. I can't wait to see what people do with this stuff and with uh, with these videos. Uh, maybe we'll see games that were started based around this that ended up looking nothing like this. Maybe there was no gun in the end. Maybe, I don't know, maybe they created a fancy painting game where you shoot paint. I, I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. Anyway, I want to thank uh, all my Patreon supporters who made this series possible. Okay, we'll see them on screen scrolling in a second. Um... And it's been great. It's been great doing the series. It's not going to be the last series I ever do. I'm going to go back to doing some standalone videos for a little bit. Um, one, maybe two, maybe three, who knows. Um, videos that my patrons will vote for because they've not had a chance to vote on a topic in a little while. While we were getting to the end of the series. Uh, but after that, I will probably kick off another series. It'll probably be something not too dissimilar in that it'll be... Probably still aimed at beginners because, well, for lots of reasons that I've talked about on my Patreon. Um, but it won't be a platformer, or it won't be an action platformer like this especially, okay? I don't know what it'll be. Maybe we'll do Asteroids or something like that again. Maybe we'll do an RPG. Maybe, oh gosh, who knows, who knows. But if you want to be involved in maybe deciding what comes next, um, it's my $5 plus patron supporters who will be having the most say because they'll be getting involved in polls and all that kind of fun stuff. So if, you, if you're if really interested in seeing a particular topic and you want to support these videos is the important thing if you want to become a patron of mine. If you just want to see more of this stuff exist, you can hop over to patreon.com forward slash seanjs and... Uh, and drop me a few dollars every month, you'll get a say in what comes next, and you'll get the fun satisfaction of knowing that these videos couldn't exist without you. Another thing a lot of people have asked me is if I would do something whereby um, I did a video looking at what people had made from this series, or just from my tutorials in general, and I think that's a good idea. I might not really limit it to this series, um, I, but I'll do a little video in a bit, uh, maybe next week, just announcing that I'm going to do that and give people a chance to send me their games and maybe we'll do a video, maybe we'll do a live stream and then we'll turn it into a video of just playing everyone's everyone's games, games that people have made from watching the stuff on my channel. That would be really great. That would be really cool to see what people have done. Um, so I might do that in the very near future. Anyway, uh, that's enough rambling at the end of this one. It just felt like an opportunity to ramble more than I usually do given it's the last one of this particular series. Thank you all for watching, uh, hope you've got plenty out of this series, and I'll catch you all next time. So I think you've sat through enough of my rambling, you know who these people are, they're awesome, they're what, who allow these videos to happen, and I'm just going to get in there and get out the special shoutouts. So shoutouts in particular to Andrew Gilbert, Arthur Kyle Vandalay, Bowser the Dog, Daka Dondago, Dan, Harold Guidry, James Grumley, Jason McMillan, Jason B, Kimo Savalampi, Marcus, Mark Lintz, Matt Cote, Michael Ward, Mike KB, Nick Slabish, Owen Morgan, Patrick Guffey, Penguin Muffins, Robert Churches, Rovan Darlin, Run, Seanathan, Stephen Hagen, TJ, Turtle Time, Zephyr Flame, and Zinan May. Thank you all so much for making this series happen, and I'll catch all of you on the next one. See you guys.